Hello viewers, in the last lecture we have introduced to you the basic concepts of input output ports and discussed the role of input output ports in interfacing input output devices. Today I shall discuss two popular input output port devices, one is non-programmable, another is programmable. As I mentioned, the I.O. ports can be broadly divided into two categories, non-programmable and programmable. Let us start with a non-programmable one. Uh, this Intel 8212 is a non-programmable I.O. port chip. The schematic diagram is shown here. Uh, here as you can see, uh, it has got eight inputs. D i 0 to 7, 8 outputs D 0 to 7, these two D s 1 bar and D s 2, these two are chip selects used for chip selects, S T B stand for strobe, clear, C L R stands for clear and as you can see there is another line M D which stands for mode. That means the mode of operation can be decided based on to which line, to which uh, line to which value this is connected, connected to VCC or ground and based on that the mode of operation can be controlled and it has got one interrupt output and inside the chip it has, it has got a data register, 8 bit data register and from the uh, schematic diagram it is clear that this uh, device can act as a single port. Uh, a single port uh, uh, device either input and output and we shall see how it can be configured. The non-programmable IO port devices can be configured by hardware means. The way it will work that can be programmed not by software but it can be configured by hardware. Let us see how it can be done in this particular case. Let us start with the use of 8212 as output port. So, here is your 8212 and it is being configured as an output port. So, this side so D O D O 0 to D O 1 to 8 this will go to some I O device. So, this will go to some I O device. On the other hand the input side has to be connected to the microprocessor, microprocessor data bus. So, D i 128 has to be connected to say D 0 to 7 of the microprocessor. On the other hand to configure this particular chip as output port the mode line the, there is a uh, line called mode as I explained the mode of operation can be decided by this the mode line and also the clear line are to be connected to VCC. So, when the mode is connected to VCC, it acts as a output port and the uh, device select lines will be here D S 1 bar and D S 2, these two will act as the chip select. So, this will act as chip select. and obviously you have to use some decoder circuit to select this chip. Now this side is connected to the IO device. So this is how it will work and uh, it has to be interfaced, it has to, it has to be connected to the microprocessor. Now let us see how it can work as a output port. The data that has to be transferred to this port has to be transferred by executing an out instruction. And obviously, you have to give the port number, port address has to be provided here and that port address is decided by proper decoder circuit which is connected to the chip select. That means, chip select hardware will decide this particular address and this can be implemented with the help of the decoder circuit which we have discussed at length. Now, this whenever this, this is executed, 
the value on the data bus which is coming from the accumulator will be transferred to this data register. I have shown that there is a data register inside it and this data register will hold the value and that value will be available on the output. So, by executing the out instruction the these two signals are activated which latches the data into this buffer and the output is available here. This is how it works that means latching takes place with the help of the chip select signal. So, in this particular case the interrupt line which I have shown has no role to play it is not being used. One simple use of this uh, 8212 as an output port is for address demultiplexing. We have already seen that 8085 microprocessor generates address in multiplexed manner. So, you can apply the AD0 line 0 to 7 to the input lines and then you can use say a decoder circuit which can be implemented by with the help of the uh, some transistors or it can be connect it can with the help of a gate or in this part in, in a particular in this particular case it can be connected to ground say this is connected to ground you do not require uh, whenever you are using it for uh, for 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 address demultiplexing however that means ds2 is not required and ds1 is connected to the ale and whenever ale is connected to this then by whenever this is activated ALE active latches this is permanently connected to ground we are not using uh, decoder circuit here. So, DS1 activates the data on this and here you get the A0 to 8 A0 to 7 in multiplexed form demultiplexed form. So, multiplex data here is available on this. So, this 8212 can be used as a for address demultiplexing for 8085. So, this is coming from 8085, AD0 to 7 and ALE which will demultiplex it. On the other hand if you want to use it as an output port then DS2 say DS2 line and DS1 line I am drawing separately here. We can use a simple gate say IOM is connected to the DS1. Uh, DS2 and DS1 line is connected to say some address line say A uh, 15, 13, 14, 13 and A 12. So, A 12, 13, 14, 15 are connected to this. So, whenever these lines are 1 this will make 0. So, whenever you execute one IO instruction with the address values 1, 1, 1, 1 for A 15. A14, A13 and A12 then this chip will be selected and data can be latched. So, we can use it as a IO port having the address 11110000 the remaining part does not matter. So, the address in this case can be F0 in hex. So, whenever the address decoder is done this way. So, this is how the 8212 can be used as an output port. Let us see how it can be used as an input port. In the as an input port if you want to configure it as an input port first thing that you have to do is to connect the mode line to ground. So, it has to be connected to ground. So, whenever mode line is connected to ground the 8212 is configured uh, as a output input port. So, in this case it is acting as an input port and this is connected to the IO device. So, here is your IO device and in this particular case whenever it is acting as an input port data into this data register is latched with the help of the strobe input. It has got a strobe input and whenever the strobe signal is generated by the IO device, the data from this IO device is latched into this data register. Then how does the 8212, uh, how does the microprocessor reads it? Obviously, in this case the output lines are to be connected to the data lines of the microprocessor and 
the device decoder circuit as I explained will be here. So, this will go to DS1 bar and we can connect the IOM line to the DS2 line and in this in this way we can provide some address I mean this data register can be mapped on the IO address space and if A15, A14, A13 and A12 were connected to these four lines then as I said the address will be F0. Now let us see how it works in this fashion whenever it is connect it is it used as an input port. So, IO device will latch the data with the help of the strobe signal and it will be available here. Then the microprocessor will read it by executing an in instruction in and the address will be F0 in hex and once it is executed that data will be will go to the data bus and it will go to the accumulator. So, this is how it can be used as a uh, as an input port and in this case we are using uh, the data register as a buffer and obviously the IO device will write according it to its own timing and the microprocessor will subsequently read it according to its own timing. Now, in this case the microprocessor does not know when the data has been written. So, we can make use of the interrupt driven mode in this particular case. In such a case what we have to do that INT line which is coming out from the 8 to 1 to can be connected through an inverter to one of the interrupt inputs say RST uh, 7.5. And in this particular case, what will happen? The once the data is latched into it, this line will go low and this line go high. That means that flip flop which is inside, there is a SR flip flop, service request flip flop. That service request flip flop will go high, the will go low, and this will go high, and that will interrupt the processor. Then the the eight to one will transfer the data. And as you have seen in such a case uh, in, in the case of interrupt driven mode the microprocessor can initiate some data transfer then it keeps on fetching and executing instructions and until interrupt comes is it keeps on checking by hardware means whether an interrupt has come or not and only when the interrupt comes it trans it goes to the interrupt service subroutine and data transfer take place. Uh, when I took the last lecture I committed a mistake actually this diamond is a decision box and it will have two lines. So, this will go to the whenever there is no interrupt it will go back it will keep on looping and so let me make the correction here and only when there is interrupt it will come out of it and data transfer will take place. That means in this case the microprocessor performs the data transfer only when this interrupt comes and data transfer take place. So, you see the 8212 can also be used to implement interrupt driven data transfer particularly whenever it is, be, is, it is being used as an input port. But one point you must notice the operation of this device is decided by the hardware can configuration. As you can see here to make it as an imp, uh, output port this side has to be connected to the microprocessor D, uh, I, D uh, I128 and the DO128 has to be connected to the output side, the IO device side. But whenever it is being used as an input port say D I128 is connected to the IO device side and DO128 is connected to see microprocessor side. Moreover, you have to make the necessary hardware interconnections for example, mode has to be grounded whenever it is used as input port and whenever it is output port this has to be connected to VCC. So, you can see it is it is not very flexible, it is not a very flexible device. And to configure it for different modes of operation we have to do it by hardware means by changing the hardware interconnection. And obviously, this is not a very uh, convenient thing and this problem can be overcome by using programmable IO port chip. 
let us introduce to you uh, a very popular programmable IO port chip. It is Intel 8255A. This is also known as programmable peripheral interface. Programmable peripheral interface. or PPI in sort. So, this device is also called as programmable peripheral interface. Let us see what is inside the chip. Let me first look at this schematic diagram before I go into the use of discuss the use of this particular versatile programmable IO chip. Uh, if, let us start with this data bus buffer. This data bus buffer is connected to D0 to 7. So, this it is connected, it is as you can see it is bidirectional. So, this provides the bidirectional and tri-state buffer for interfacing directly to the system bus of the microprocessor and it has got read-write control logic and all the read-write signals, read-write and some address lines A1, A0, reset, chip select, these are, these are the necessary read-write control signal has to come either from the microprocessor or it has to be generated. For example, the chip select signal has to be generated with the help of suitable decoder circuit. Uh, and these signals di directly will come from the microprocessor. So, this side will go to the microprocessor. And let us uh, look at the peripheral side or the IO device side. As it, as it appears, it has got uh, four ports, four IO ports, PA0 to 7. This is 8 bit, uh, 8 bit port. We can say this is a port A and PC is 4 to 7. It is 4 bit IO, IO port. Then PB, port B, it is also 8 bit IO port and port C, PC0 to 7, 4 bit IO port. Actually, for the convenience of the discussion of operation of 8, 8, 8, uh, 8 to 5, 5, the, the operation has been divided into two groups, group A and group B. And under group A comes the port A and uh, four port lines of port C, PC 4 to 7 comes under group A. That is why the read-write control logic is generating signal which is going to group A control and group A control signal control is controlling this part, this 4 bit of port C and the 8 bit uh, of port A. Similarly, the group B, group B control is controlling this uh, port B and part of port C, PC0 to 3. And inside this device, there are four, resist, four resistors. What are the four resistors? Port A, 8 bit, port C, these two together 8 bit, port B, another 8 bit, so three 8 bit ports. And also, there is a control register which is here, control register with the help of which the operation of this programmable device can be configured, controlled. So, the programmable uh, control registers plays a very key role in programmable input output devices because by changing the uh, data stored in these control registers, the operation of the device can be changed. That means the chip can be configured for different modes of operation by writing suitable value into the control register. And let us see what are the various control registers present in 8255 and how they can be controlled and how they can be accessed. Inside the chip, it has got four registers, as I said, which can be accessed with the help of the chip select and these two address line A0 and A1. As I have shown, the address lines A0 and A1 are connected here and this is the chip select. So, depending on the values of, uh, depending on the values of chip select A0 and A1, the various registers present inside the 8255 can be accessed. So, whenever chip select is 0, A0 and A1 are 0, 0, then port A register is accessed, port A. Whenever chip select is 0 and A1 is 1, A0 is 0, then port B register is accessed. Whenever chip select is 0 
and A1 is 1, A0 is 0, then port C register is accessed. And whenever chip select is 0 and these two lines are 1, 1, A0 and A1, then control register is selected, control. And of course, whenever the chip select is 1, 1, 1 and irrespective of these values A0 and A1, it can have either 0 or 1. If this is 1, none of the registers will be selected. Now, as I said, the control register plays a very important role. So, we have to understand the format of the control word to understand the operation of the device. So, here are the different uh, bit values, bit positions of the control word. This is the, this is for the control word. And the operation of the control word is configured, can be configured by writing suitable values into this control word. Let us see how it can be done. First of all, the most significant bit, bit 7 actually is decides the mode of operation. Say this is uh, mode set and this is one active. That means to perform the um, uh, to change the mode of operations, whenever it is performing controlling the mode, then this bit has to be set to 1. We shall see later on uh, when this bit is 0, then it has got some other operation. So, whenever you are controlling the mode of operation, then this bit has to be set to 1. And then bit 4, 5 and then 6 and 5 are used to control the operation of uh, the group A. So, group A operations are controlled with the help of these two bits. Here, so it, uh, it selects the mode mode select, mode of operation of group A devices are selected here. So, whenever these two bits are 0, 0, then mode 0, whenever it, this is 0, 1, mode 1, whenever it is 1, 0, 1, x, then mode 2. That means, the device can be configured in three different modes and the three different modes are mode 0, mode 1 and mode 2. By writing 0, 0, uh, 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0 or 1, 1 into these two bits. And bit 4 divides the direction of port A. Port A that means P A 0 to 7, the direction of this port A, we have seen that here uh, I have shown it as a bidirectional line, but it can be used as an output port or it can be used as an input port. So, this can be configured with the help of uh, this uh, bit 4. So, whenever this is 0, then out, whenever it is 1, then in. Then bit 3, some of the bits we have seen uh, belong to group A. PC 4 to 7. The direction of these bits are also decided with the help of uh, bit 3 and here uh, they come. So, this is port C control that means PC 4 to 7. Whenever it is 0, then out and whenever it is 1, then in. That means, the input and output operations can be decided by the help uh, with the help of this particular bit. Now, let us consider the remaining three bits, the bit 0 and uh, 1 and 2. Bit 0 is used to uh, control the operation of port C, port C that means PC 0 to 3 the direction of these ports can be decided with the help of uh, this uh, bit 0 and when, whenever it is 0 then it is out and whenever it is 1 then in. And this bit is used, bit 1 is used to, de to decide the direction of port B that means PB 
0 to 7, here also 0 for uh, out and 1 for in and the last bit, the bit 2 will uh, control the direction, the mode of operation. That means mode select can be performed by with the help of this bit. And since there is only one bit, depending on the value of 0 and 1, it can work either in mode 0 or mode 1. So, this is this is the control word format of uh, 8255 and we shall see how we can use this 8255 in different modes, mode 0, mode 1 and mode 2. And let us explain the operation of these three different modes, mode 0, mode 1 and mode 2 one by one. In mode 0, it can, it is essentially simple IO. It is used for using the 8255 is in simple IO mode and in this particular case, the 8255 provides you uh, 4 IO ports, 4 IO ports and here it is PA 0 to 7, PC 4 to 7 under group A, then PB 0 to 7 and PC 0 to 3 these lines under group B. So, these, these lines are, comes under group B and these two comes under group A. So, here you see you are essentially getting 24 bit ports or 4 ports of 8 bit, 2, 2 of 4 bit and another of 8 bit. So, 2 8 bit ports and 2 4 bit ports and each of the, these ports can be configured as an output port or as an input port without change of any hardware configuration. That means, by without changing the interconnection, the same ports say port A, port C, port to 7, port B 0 to 7 or port C 0 to 3, all these four ports can be configured as an output port or input port by changing these bit values. What you have to do? You have to write 0 0 here or 0 here in this bit and then depending on you write 0 or 1, 0 or 1 here, 0 in these two bits or in these two bits say here, uh, these two bits, the direction of the ports are decided. And here is an example of, of the use of 8255 in mode 0. Here you see I have used the 8255 port A, only one port is used here this is connected to a DA converter. This is a digital to analog converter. A digital to analog converter has been connected to port A and the device is being configured in mode 0 in this particular case. And this side as you can see here is connected to the microprocessor. Obviously, it is 8085. And the various signals as are connected directly D0 to 7, read, write and A9, A8, they will come to A0 and sorry, this will be A1 and A0. Actually, in 8255, 8255 it is A1 and A0, not uh, A9 and A8. We can connect A9 and A8, A8, we can also connect A0 and a1, as we know in case of uh, input and output operations, the A0 to 7 and A8 to 15, they have the same values. That means A0 and A8 has the same value, A9 and A1 has the same value. So, it does not matter whether we connect A0 or A8 or A1 or A9. So, here A8 and A9 has been connected. And how it will work? First of all, after making this interconnection, you have to write a program to configure port A in mode 0 and as an output port. What, what has to be written in the code? First of all, this bit has to be 1 and it is in group A. So, it has these two bits also has to be 0, 0. 
then since it is an output port this bit also has to be 0. So, this is 1 0 0 0 that means the code will be code that you have to write is 1 0 0 0 and the other bits are not really very important in this case because we are not using it. So, the code that you have to write into the control word is 1 0 0 0 in hex it is 8 and then 0. Let us see how your program will look like. So, you have to write this value 8 0 in hex and then you have to output it to the control register. So, you have to output it to the control register. What is the address of the control register? As you can see the way it is connected it will be selected only when A15, A14, A13, A12 or in other words A9, A8, A8 uh, sorry uh, it will be A7, A6, A5 and A4 these four lines are all one or in other words it will be selected whenever it is connected to F. So, other bits are not important and uh, since it is connected you have to write it into the port the this register control register A0, A and A1 has to be 1 1. So, the higher order 4 bit is 1 1 1 1 and the, the lower order 2 bits are 1 1. So, you have to write 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 1 1. So, the, the value is F3 and if you execute this it will write the configure the port in output mode and write the value into the control register. So, configure port A by using this you are configuring port A as output port and the uh, output port and in mode 0 that is been done. Now, suppose you want to output some data to the DA converter to get some analog corresponding analog value. To do that again you have to execute say move immediate instruction and that data has to be loaded into the accumulator first then you have to execute out instruction and you have to write it into the port A register and for port A register as you can see these two bits are to be 0 0. So, F 0 F 0 will be the address of this particular port because of the uh, chip select signal that the way the chip, chip select signal is generated. So, it will be out F 0 and this will this will write data into the this writes data into the port A and as it writes data into port A this will be available on this line and you, you will get corresponding analog value on this port. So, you have you have seen how the 8 to 5 5 can be used in mode 0 as an output port. In a similar manner you can use it as an input port only difference will be that port A has to be configured as, in, as an input port by writing suitable value into the control register. Now, let us see how it works in mode 1. Mode 1 is can be used either in asynchronous mode or in interrupt driven mode and here it is shown how it is how this it is being used as an input port this is for group A and here it is shown how it is being used as output port and here for this is for group B it is used as input port and here it is used as output port. Let us first explain the operation in asynchronous mode how it works in the asynchronous mode. So, you can see here in this case this side will go to the I O device and whenever it is used as an input port the data coming from the I O device will be transferred to port A there is a register here port A register with the help of the strobe signal. So, you can see here the strobe signal will transfer data to this register it will go there, but it will remain there and how the microprocessor will know about it? The microprocessor will know about it by looking at this input buffer full A signal as you can see here as you latch data with the help of this signal it immediately makes the input buffer full line high. So, input buffer full line will go high and, uh, and uh, then 
by looking at this bit, the microprocessor can keep on reading this bit. So, you can the way it works, you may remember we had discussed about the, the asynchronous mode of operation. After the uh, to read to get the status of the IO device, it keeps on checking whether the device is ready or not. This checking can be done by reading this bit bit value input buffer full A. So, PC 5 this bit value will be read and whenever it is 1 the microprocessor will know that the data has been latched into this buffer. Then it will execute one read instruction. So, as you can see here read instruction is executed and that will lead to uh, I mean resetting the input buffer full signal. That means, as the data is read from the buffer, buffer is no longer full it is empty. So, this line will go low. So, by looking at that the IO device the 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 IO device will know now the buffer is empty and it will latch another data. So, this is how it will work and not for group A and group B. Here you see the port A is being used as input port and the port the port C lines are used as handshaking signals. So, PC4 and PC5 here are, are acting as handshaking signal this is for strobing and this is for acknowledgement going to the IO device. So, this is how it acts as an input port. Similarly, the, the port A and port B can be used as an output port which is explained here. Whenever it is used as output port, the data will be written into these re registers PB or PA, PA or PB registers by executing write instruction. That means, by executing out instruction. As out instruction is executed, this write signal will be activated and data will be transferred to this register. And as soon as data is, latched, uh, is loaded here, that output buffer full A signal will be high. As you can see here, it sorry, it is a low active signal, so it will go low. So, this signal will inform the IO device that data is now available here. That means, output buffer is now full and the IO device has to read it. So, IO device will transfer the data and then it will, will read it and send a signal which is known as acknowledgement signal. And as the acknowledgement signal is sent by the IO device, the output buffer full will all go, go high. That means, data has already been read by the IO device, there is no, we can assume that the buffer is now empty. And this is how the port A and port B can perform the transfer of data in asynchronous mode. And as I said, mode 1 can be used in interrupt driven mode as well. And let us see how it works in interrupt driven mode, in input port as well as at output port. In input port it does in this way, whenever the data is latched, is strobed as you can see here interrupt line goes high. That means, whenever the IO device latches some data into this register, the INTRA that interrupt line goes high. So, this is connected to a one of the interrupt lines of the microprocessor and as a consequence of that the microprocessor will jump to some interrupt service subroutine and as part of that interrupt service subroutine it will execute an in instruction which will generate a read signal and as the read signal is done the data will be transferred from this to the accumulator from port A or port B from port B to the accumulator and data will go to the microprocessor and as you can see here as the reading operation is finished that input power buffer full is going low and interrupt is also withdrawn. So, it is ready for another uh, byte of that data transfer. Similarly, uh, whenever you are performing as an output port as you write data into it uh, then the interrupt line goes low and whenever the microprocessor the IO device reads the data. Uh, after the data is transferred, it sends an acknowledgement signal, the interrupt line goes high. So, this interrupt line will go high and it, it, then it will interrupt the microprocessor and the microprocessor in turn will write another byte of data. So, in this way, the data transfer will take place in interrupt driven mode. So, you can see here both asynchronous and interrupt driven mode can be performed. Let me explain the operation of this device 
in both asynchronous mode and interrupt driven mode. First, let me see how it can be used in asynchronous mode. Let us assume that we would like to interface the 8 to 5 5 to a AD converter analog to digital converter. Here is the ADC analog to digital converter and AD converter as you know will generate some data. So, it has to be connected to the input port let it be port A and port A is connected here and since this AD converter is a slow device you have to use asynchronous mode and the AD converter has got a strobe signal uh, with the help of which strobe or data ready with the help of which it latches data uh, into the uh, can transfer data whenever the data is ready and this has to be connected to strobe input of the micro the, to the 8255 port uh, 8255 and the corresponding port line is PC4 as you know. And uh, the conversion can be started start conversion a start conversion can be done with the help of a signal which is uh, input buffer full A. So, these two will act as the hand shaking signal this is your PC 5 input buffer full and this will go to the uh, start conversion signal. Now, the AD converter as you can see here is connected to a port line and these two are the hand shaking signal necessary for interfacing facing the AD converter. Let us see how it can be used uh, to transfer data in asynchronous mode by writing a suitable program. The program first of all we will we'll configure the port, port A in mode 1 and as an input port. To do that the corresponding code that you have to write is a V8 H. So, this configures port A configures port A and after the configure to configure this value has to be transferred to the uh, control register to do that you have to execute out F3. We have assumed that the address uh, of the control register is F3 the way the, the device decoder circuit is made and after that you have to initiate the start conversion. To do that you have to generate you have to make this line low that means PC5 has to be made low and to do that you output a code A 0 A H if you output this and then it will actually do the start conversion and it has to go to port C, port C has the address of F2. So, as you output it to F2, it will does the start conversion. So, this will start conversion. However, data is not yet available on this line. So, when the AD converter will convert, will con perform the conversion, the microprocessor will keep on checking the status by looking at this strobe bit that means PC4 bit. To do that, it will perform this in F, F2, it will read it and it will check this bit A and I 1 0, bit 4 it will compare and check whether it is 1 or not 1 0 in hex. Then if it is not 1, if it is not 0, it will keep on looping. So, it will jump not 0 say loop 1. So, he, it will be loop 1. So, you see here it will keep it will keep on looping uh, to check the status of the de device IO device in this case it is AD converter and AD converter will take some time to convert the analog data. So, here is the analog data to digital form and once it is converted into digital form then this line will go low and the, whenever this line is goes low it comes out of the loop and it can perform the reading operations from this port A. So, corresponding address is F0 
and it can load the data into the uh, in some memory location load some data in some memory location address. So, here it reads data and after reading data it stores data in, in a memory location in some memory location and obviously yeah, it has to be ended with a halt instruction. So, we have explained the the use of 8 to 5 5 as a input port and it is working in asynchronous mode. Let us see how we can use it in interrupt driven mode. In interrupt driven mode, the same circuit can be used, we can use the same circuit, same circuit can be used with some additional thing. What is the additional thing? This 8 to 5 5 had, has to generate an interrupt and for that purpose the corresponding interrupt line is INTRA that is your PC3 that has to be connected to the interrupt input of a microprocessor. Let it be, let this interrupt input be uh, RST 7.5. So, let it go to RST 7.5 at which is the interrupt input of the microprocessor and with this modification in hardware or it can be already there, we can use the interrupt driven mode. However, the program will be little different here, the first part will be same, the it will be MVI, you have to configure the port MVI A B0H, so configure port A. as an input port and in mode 1 it does that of course it will do it only after this is executed out F3 and after this is being done the another operation it has to do is to enable the interrupt. To enable the interrupt one has to be written into this PC 4 bit and to do that it has to execute these two instruction MVI A 09 x then out the corresponding port address is F2 it is connected to port C so the address is F2. So, with the help of these two instruction it actually does uh, enabling of interrupt enables the interrupt. After enabling the interrupt the micro the it has to start the conversion process that means the start conversion operation has to be started as I told the micro the AD converter will start conversion whenever this signal comes. So, to generate the signal it has to execute two more instruction. So, MVI A 0 A H and out F 2 that is the port address. So, this will start conversion and after this conversion is started the microprocessor will not keep on checking the status in this case because here it is interrupt driven mode. It will keep on fetching and executing instruction, fetch and execute instructions, various instructions which are followed by this out instruction. However, Whenever the interrupt comes, this interrupt is generated when the data conversion is over, then this signal will go and it will generate the interrupt. Whenever the interrupt comes, it has to jump to interrupt service subroutine. And in the interrupt service subroutine, the corresponding code will be, it will read the data, read F0, then it has to store the data into the memory, some address then as you know whenever an interrupt comes it has to be disabled. So, it has to execute the it and another instruction to enable the interrupt before it returns then it will execute the return instruction and it will go back to this point. So, you see here the difference between the previous code and this code in the previous case in the asynchronous mode it was simply looping here to check the status of the device and AD converter and only when the data was latched it was 
it, by, it was taking this particular bit, the C4 bit, then the data was read from port A. On the other hand, in asynchronous mode, by after executing this instruction, it keeps on fetching and executing instructions, subsequent instructions, and only when the interrupt is generated as a consequence of the transfer of data uh, from the AD converter to the port A, the interrupt is generated and the uh, it will jump to interrupt service subroutine as we have seen here in this case. So here as you can see as the data is transferred, input buffer is full, interrupt is generated. So that interrupt will lead to uh, a reading operation which is performed here it's in F0 and this will disable the interrupt and it will make it ready for the next uh, data transfer. So uh, viewers, today we have discussed the use of uh, 8255 as an input port, as an output port and how it can be configured in mode 0 and mode 1 and we have illustrated with the help of an example how it can perform data transfer in asynchronous mode and interrupt driven mode. That is not the end of the story. The 8255 can do something more which we shall discuss in the next lecture. Thank you. To be 10. You have to write this into this control register and in this case this will be acting as an output port. So direction will be output D027 and here it is PB027 and here the PC1 is your output buffer full B, PC2 is acknowledgement as you have already seen acknowledgement B and PC3 will act as interrupt B. Let me very quickly explain the operation. As you perform the write operation, then uh, the sequence of events starts. It will lead to that output buffer full low, as you know, output buffer full will be, the signal will be activated and acknowledgement will be generated by the IO device and this will whenever this occurs that interrupt will be also generated by, by the microprocessor and whenever the interrupt occurs it will perform the it will that interrupt will uh, be responsible that means when interrupt will go high that means in response to that the acknowledgement will be signal will go high that means whenever this is over that means uh, that interrupt will be withdrawn and it knows that data transfer is complete. That means whenever the IO device has read the data, interrupt will be withdrawn. So after, as you read the, write the data, interrupt is generated and as the IO device reads the data, then it is withdrawn. So this is how the uh, you can transfer data in interrupt driven mode. So uh, uh, to summarize what you have discussed today, in today's lecture, I have briefly introduced to you two types of peripheral devices. One is non-programmable uh, IO port chip 8212. Another is 8255 programmable peripheral interface. I have explained to you the operation of this programmable peripheral interface device uh, and operation in uh, synchronous mode, asynchronous mode and interrupt driven mode. It can do more it can also perform bidirectional uh, data transfer which we shall discuss in the next class. Thank you. You have already done it.